Hello and welcome to our worship today. I'm sitting in the new renovated Psych Methodist Church and um, sat here in this beautiful room overlooking the common. We're going to begin with a call to worship. We thank you God for creating such a wonderful world. We choose to follow you. We thank you for creating us and giving us a new day. We choose to follow you. We thank you that you feed our hearts and minds. We choose to follow you. We thank you for the choices you give to us each day. We choose to follow you. Thank you for trusting us with your word. We choose to follow you. Amen. We're going to sing now a song of joy as we come to worship. And it's um, based on a psalm. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I wonder whether you sang your way to this worship time together. Enjoy. Last week, we were thinking about building, the buildings that we've erected as church, the lives that we build individually, and the life built on God that is offered. 
We've reflected on how buildings have become important and this week the set readings continue with this theme. The Old Testament reading, which we've not heard, is set at a time that the temple had been completed. Remember how long that was. We're told that there was a cloud hanging there, God's presence. The people recognised God there and saw it as their place. They saw it as the place where God was. The question for us that we have to consider now is what is legitimate and wholesome about our need and love for special sacred places? Where might they be found? Does it always have to be where we think? Where can you immerse yourself fully in God? And where might that place be for others? I think we should take some time to just think about that because it might not be as we think. And it's a challenge. The psalm for today talked of singing the way to the temple. Did you sing on your way to physical church or prior to sitting down watching this online? Sometimes, you know, people are unable to sing within a house of worship or approach worship with songs in their hearts. Ephesians was instructing us on what we should wear. It was the whole armour of God thing. What we clothe ourselves in. How do you wrap God around you? I think that's a lovely phrase. What questions or attributes do you or we as church wish we could clothe ourselves in? What should we be dressing in? I think maybe that is a conversation that we must have. What resources do we need to fully give ourselves to serving God? Is what you wear today different from what it once was? Does what we do or wear change according to context and circumstance? What should we be challenging and critiquing? And what should we be discarding or throw away? All very real questions for us personally, as well as church in the community. Our readings today are from Ephesians 6, 10 to 20, and then from John. The first one is entitled in the message version, A Fight to the Finish. And that about wraps it up. God is strong. He wants you strong. So take everything the Master has set out for you. Well-made weapons of the best materials. Put them to use so you'll be able to stand up to everything that's thrown your way. This is no weekend war that we'll walk from and forget about in a couple of hours. This is for keeps. A life or death fight to the finish. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can, everything that God has given you, so that when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. Maybe weapon is not the right translation of the word, but they are indispensable tools. In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray long and hard. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. And Jesus said, or Paul said on Jesus' behalf, don't forget to pray for me. Pray that I'll know what to say and have the courage to say it at the right time, telling the mystery to one and all. The message that I Jailbird preacher that I am, 
am responsible for getting out. And we are responsible for getting that message out. Our reading from John goes like this. It's entitled, Too Tough to Swallow. Many among his disciples heard this and said, This is tough teaching, too tough to swallow. Jesus sensed that his disciples were having a hard time with this and said, Does this rattle you completely? What would happen if you saw the Son of Man ascending to where he came from? The Spirit can make life. Sheer muscle and willpower don't make anything happen. Every word I've spoken to you is a spirit word, and so it is life-making. But some of you are resisting, refusing to have any part in this. Jesus knew from the start that some weren't going to risk themselves with him. He knew also who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you earlier that no one is capable of coming to me on his own. You get to me only as a gift from the Father. After this, many of his disciples left. They no longer wanted to be associated with him. And then Jesus gave the twelve their chance. Do you also want to leave? That's a question that we are being asked. Do you want to stay? Do you want to leave? Peter replied, Master, to whom would we go? You have the words of real life, eternal life. We've already committed ourselves, confident that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus responded, Haven't I handpicked you, the twelve? Still, one of you is a devil. He was referring to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. This man, one of the twelve, was even getting ready to betray him. So there's lots of challenges for us again. Um, some people have been saying I've been giving too many. Um, but that's what my job is. That's what I'm meant to do. Um, the Gospel reading from John that we've heard today gets to the real heart of things. And to me, it's got a very clear message, actually. And it's a simple one, but it is a challenging one again, because it is what really matters above everything else is actually our devotion to God. And that question, are we acting as if we are at one with God? It's not really about buildings at all. It's not about armour that you put on. It's not about smoke screens or places to hide or places to shelter in. It's actually about us living a spirit-filled life. And that means it might be risky. We'll have to be creative. We're not going to feel safe all the time. We're going to have to jump in and act on inspiration, intuition, all those things. That spirit-filled life that God embodies in us when we commit ourselves to following him. And we are called to follow wholeheartedly with every bit of our being. And I do know that there's often times when we keep bits back. The promise is that if we do this, then we will be fed and we'll know that we're doing God's will. We've been presented in that reading today with that fact that for some, it might mean that they walk away. We're presented with that very pertinent question 
that doesn't go away and that we can't hide from. Sometimes it's that feeling inside us that actually just keeps our feet on the ground but keeps us going forward even though it feels totally alien and we seem to be dragging our feet but it's God that's actually in there calling us. There is that element of choice. This way or that way. As Methodists, we're about to begin a new year in September. That's when our new connectional year begins. And often that is marked by our annual covenant service. We don't do that in Rochdale in September. We do it in January at the new year. But it is a new connectional year starting and things begin again in September. A time of recommitment. Maybe this year it, it would have been appropriate to do it now because there's a sense in which we are beginning to get back to doing things new as in a new fresh start, new year, following all the things that have been happening. Now the choice is the one Jesus' disciples made back there in the day. It's not any different for us now. The choice was to either walk away or declare trust and walk with Jesus. Now it said in the script something about the fact that Jesus knew that some people were going to walk away. And we're told that some left for good. I know there's a very real fear that people don't want to come back to church and that they perhaps have left for good. All the more reason that we should be doing things that capture and help people to follow God even if they don't come back to church. So, where are you? What will you choose? Where are you being called? Are you prepared to fully commit yourself wholeheartedly to God's work? Because that is what he's asking. There's no in-between. He's asking for wholehearted, full commitment. On a light note, you all know the familiar party song, Hokey Cokey. Well, take that with you, because if we do the Hokey Cokey and we turn around, that's what it's all about. Turning around for God, but putting your whole self in, maybe out, in, out, in, out, shake it all about. That's the Christian life we get shaken, but we want to be whole self in. Well, God wants us to be whole self in, wholeheartedly and unashamedly. Are you ready to do that? Well, I do hope so, because there's much to be done and much to be accomplished. And today is the start. I hope that you have been challenged this morning. I hope that you are whole self in. And no doubt we'll find that out in the days that follow. See you next week. Bye. We're going to listen to um, a song that actually helps us to say yes. And then we're going to sing another one.
keeping us a community of faith. May God bless in the days ahead, deepening our trust, encouraging our hope, amplifying our love. Amen. Amen.